look, one thing I've come to realize with growth is that the more you grow or the more you age, the less likely you are to engage in things that seem to frustrate you. I've been using 3D code for years now, but I just hate it when I can't seem to find a solution to a bug or some kind of workflow obstacle. And it hurts really bad when I share my observations about a software, make videos on them, only for people to come into the comment sections and call me a Blender fanboy. Not that I don't use Blender, I do, but I also have sincere concerns I think others share too. And if we can discuss them openly, I think it will be great. I have no intentions of denigrating any software. All I have are sincere concerns. And I think I still got a couple of concerns which I would like to raise before we get into our video for today. I have not been a 3D code user for long, just about three years now. While it's undoubtedly powerful, there are still some issues that I feel need addressing. One, the moderation on their forum worries me. When genuine bugs and workflow problems get reported, these discussions for some reason seem to disappear rather than being addressed. Now, this makes it harder for users to find solutions to common problems, right? If people's sincere concerns are going to be deleted from forums, then it means that there aren't going to be solutions to them. And so people are still going to keep asking them. Number two, the software is marketed as an industrial design solution, but in practice, I found it functions more as a digital sculpting tool with some added reference capabilities. What's particularly frustrating is encountering persistent bugs that never seem to get fixed, combined with documentations that hasn't kept pace with updates. The support experience can be inconsistent too. You often have to explain your issues multiple times to different people. And like I said, I find that frustrating. I don't know if it's a normal thing or it has to do with age, like I made mention of from the beginning. Number three, for game asset creation, I found that using 3D code alongside Blender helps overcome some of these limitations, especially with the improved interoperability in 2025. But I really wish the core software would address these fundamental issues that hold it back from being truly great right and so these are my three concerns now let's drop a little bit with some comparisons and then now get into 3d code versus 3d code texturer 3d code has been doing something blender is usually mocked for almost all the time they call blender the jack of all trade but the master at none Right now, this is my personal ranking comparing 3D Code's features to other industry standard tools. Number one is going to be 3D Code versus ZBrush. I would rate 3D Code an 80 over 100 when comparing both tools' sculpting capabilities. Versus Substance Painter for textures, I would give 3D Code again 80% there. 3D Code's recent update has pushed it very close to Substance Painter in terms of what Substance does best. Already, some people find 3D code better than Substance, so it typically comes down to what, you, what really works for you. 3D code versus Mamoset for baking, I'll give 3D code 80% again. Versus Blender for Retopo, it hands down 3D code. Well, maybe Blender has some add-ons that makes Retopo great, but in raw comparison, I think 3D code is far ahead when compared to Blender in Retopo. In short, 3D code is the only tool in the world that lets you sculpt high poly details, optimize topology, unwrap UVs, and paint PBR textures without ever leaving the software. But here is where it gets interesting. If 3D code boosts of all these capabilities, then what's the use of 3D code texturer? 
This has been the question the whole time, right? Before we break things down, this is how I would describe Textura in short. Textura is just another software from Pilgwe trying to be a substance painter material workflow alternative at half the price. I think this will be the easiest way to describe Textura. You get no sculpting here, no modeling here, just pure texturing. I know most people dislike these types of comparisons, but trust me, sometimes these comparisons are the only way you are able to get the real differences out there. And so I'll begin with PBR texturing. I would say both tools offer PBR, but the complete 3D code is a bit slower since it's a complete package with sculpting, retopo, and other features. And so here, Textura wins, not because it has better PBR features, but simply because it's lightweight and faster. My advice, get a better machine and get the complete 3D code. Its additional features will come in handy with time. Now, about the recent GPU acceleration support for both Textura and 3D codes, I would say this particular update has caused 3D codes brush lag to reduce a lot, especially when working on 8K textures. However, the RAM consumption bug still exists. Now, this is based off my own personal test. Since Textura is lightweight, the GPU acceleration benefits it more and it doesn't have the RAM consumption issue. So this is one bug to watch out for when working on 8K textures in the complete 3D code. Again, Textura wins over 3D code not because it's better, but rather because it's lightweight and faster. That's all. Now. Let's talk about smart materials, one of 3D code's strong points. Both versions have identical smart material systems, layer-based painting, and the new AI-assisted material blending added within their recent update. And so over here, it's a win-win for both. The major difference is in UV editing and texture baking. The complete 3D code supports full UV on wrapping and editing, plus complete high to low poly baking. Textura doesn't support UV editing, so you need pre unwrapped models, and its baking is limited to same model transfers with no high to low baking capabilities. And so, in conclusion, pick Textura if all you need to do or all you do is painting or if you are on a tight budget although i personally do not think the reason why one should go in for textura is because he or she is on a tight budget looking at the price difference i think you can actually wait for some time uh, save up some more and then get the entire 3d code suit also ensure that your machine has some or meet the minimum requirements in order to run 3D code effectively. Although if your machine isn't beefed up, you might experience certain lag and other bug issues. I mean, it's it's you grow with it over time. And so as time goes on, you keep updating your machine if 3D code is exactly what you want to use. Hey, if you've made it this far, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe, like, and then share this video. Now, if all you needed was the core differences between these two software packages, then I think you actually got what you came in for. But you can stick around if you got some more time to spare because I've got some more 3D code inside to share that I think you might find valuable. Now, these are some standard features that 3D code offers. Although you might have already bumped into them or know them already because you are a current user but i want to make sure everyone understands them clearly this will help the viewers fully grasp the significant difference between the full 3d code package and texture number one is going to be voxel and surface sculpting 
like digital clay, but better. 3D code stands alone in 2025 with its dual voxel and polygonal sculpting system, offering artists unprecedented flexibility where ZBrush and Blender fall short. While ZBrush locks you into subdivision surface and Blender relies on polygonal slash dyne topo limitations, 3D code treats models as true volumetric data letting you sculpt freely without topology constraint before switching you to precision surface detailing. With recent updates, 3D code voxel sculpting lets you manipulate pure volume like digital clay, where every brush stroke physically adds or removes mass rather than just deforming polygons the way ZBrush and Blender do. What makes this revolutionary is how the dynamic tessellation automatically optimizes resolutions as you work, completely eliminating the topology constraints that plagues uh, traditional sculpting workflow. A single click switches you to surface mode where live clay technology merges organic form with cut level bowlings and curve tools something neither ZBrush's subdivision surface nor Blender's Dynetopo can achieve. Again, its recent updates take this further with smartphone brushes that intuitively patch holes during sculpting and memory-optimized voxel remeshing that handles 50 million voxels without lag. While ZBrush still dominates micro details and Blender integrates better with rendering pipelines, 3D code stands alone as the only solution that lets you fluidly transition from loose voxels concepting to production ready surface detailing in one uninterrupted workflow. Aside voxel and surface sculpting, 3D code boasts of one of the best tools for retopology UV mapping. Look, UV mapping in 3D code is beast. With its recent update, you can auto unwrap algorithms and manual edit tools. This ensures you get clean, stretch free UVs without jumping to another program. And then, what most people complained about, which was UDIMS, what drew a lot of pros onto Murray. Now, 3D Code has it. UDIMS in 3D Code is crucial for film and high end game workflows. Aside all these features, now what 3D code is famously known for, and that is PBR texturing. And so now why switch to Substance Painter when 3D code has full PBR painting built in? Hmm. I can feel the Substance Painter fanboys coming for me, but let's continue. Now how do I even end this? Right. Okay. So who uses 3D code? I feel that is also an important question most people might be asking, right? Who uses 3D code? One will be character artists who want to sculpt, retopo and texture without switching applications. Number two is going to be environmental modelers who want to build and paint entire scenes in one workflow. Number three, we also have the indie game developers who want to save time and money with an all-in-one solution. So now they got Blender, which is a jack of all trade, and then 3D code, which costs less and is also, for some reason, contending to be a good jack of all trade. Number four, concept artists who simply want to quickly iterate designs from blockouts to final textures. Now, what is 3D code texturer? If you are a texture artist who lives and breathes PBR materials, smart mask, and layer-based painting, but couldn't care less about sculpting or retopology, then you should look into 3D code texturer. Developed by Pilgui as a streamlined version of 3D code, this tool ditches the modeling baggage and focuses purely on high-end texturing making it a budget-friendly alternative to Substance Painter. But before you jump on Texturer, you need to make some important decisions. Unless you are absolutely certain you only want to texture and nothing else, here's why. 
the complete 3D coat has an excellent UV mapping model, crucial for hand painting workflows. Another advantage is its basic mesh editing tools, allowing you to tweak sculpted models directly in 3D code. All these features are completely absent in Textura. Let's talk 3D printing. Textura is designed specifically for texture painting and rendering, and it does not include features for modeling and sculpting. Therefore, it lacks the necessary tools for creating or modifying 3D models, which are essential for 3D printing workflows. Additionally, while Textura supports exporting textures, it does not support exporting models in formats commonly used for 3D printing. And that will be STL or, STL or OBJ. Choose the full version of 3D code if you require a comprehensive set of tools for modeling, sculpting, UV mapping, and texturing. This version offers an all-in-one solution suitable for a complete 3D creation workflow. Opt for 3D code Textura if you are focused solely on texture painting and rendering. Okay, I think that's all I've got for you today. If you have anything to add, kindly leave them in the comment section. And if I find it valuable, I'll pin it to the top of the comment section. Until my next video, peace.